Hey guys, Lord Hesian here, back again with another video. Let's get started. <laughs> I finally got on my hands on the Samsung Galaxy A21s and the Samsung Galaxy A31. In this video, we're going to compare the Galaxy A31 camera to the Galaxy A21s camera in a bit to set them apart. I'm also going to throw in the Samsung Galaxy S10 just to give you a perspective of camera performance on 2020 mid-range phones and a flagship from last year. Before you do, please smash that subscribe button if you haven't yet and turn on notifications to help Lord Hesion get 2,000 subscribers. To start this off, let's quickly get you up to speed on what the phone offers as we go through the unboxing experience Lord Hesion style. On the Samsung Galaxy A21s, you get a 6.5 inch TFT 720 display an Exynos 850 chipset, options between 64 gigabytes of storage and 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, or 32 gigs of storage and 3 gigs of RAM. You also get a 5000 mAh battery powering up the phone. All of that totals to $210. Flipping to the A31, you get a slightly smaller 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display, a MediaTek Helio P65 chipset, you get 128 gigs of storage coupled with 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, or 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM. A 4,500 mAh battery is powering up the phone and all of that sums up to $225. Both devices run on Android 10 and run UI 2.1 straight out of the box. Moving on to the camera specifications. On the A31, you get a 48MP f2.0 wide-angle lens, an 8MP f2.2 ultra-wide lens, a 5MP f2.4 macro lens, a 5MP 2.4 depth sensor, and a 20 megapixel f2.2 wide-angle selfie camera at the front. On the Galaxy A21s, you get a 48 megapixel f2.0 wide-angle lens, an 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra-wide lens, a 2 megapixel f2.4 macro camera, a 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor, and a 13 megapixel f2.2 wide-angle selfie camera. Also note that I installed the latest software updates on all phones, turned off any beauty modes, and the camera lenses were cleaned prior to this test. What you see here is the raw untouched image quality you'll get if you choose to go out and buy the phones. Let's talk about the selfie cameras. The selfies shot on both phones are pleasing to the eye. They feel rich, detailed, and clarity is nothing short of amazing. From these samples, you can see how the A31 sort of struggles with color temperature, with results being a hit or miss from time to time. It's nothing too major, but again, side by side, it's something you can pick up at first glance. Switching to the ultra wide angle, which is just a zoomed out crop perspective, both phones manage to keep the colors composed with nothing washed out of the shot. Side by side with the Galaxy S10 shots, we can see that the image quality across all three phones is quite literally at par in every aspect. Just the subtle differences that pop up when you stare at the pictures long enough. Stuff like the A31 and the A21s fitting much more in ultra wide selfies than the S10. In terms of portrait shots on both phones, the Genius software used to blur the background does a really good job in mapping out the edges of the subject in focus while keeping the clarity and the colors of the shot top notch. A couple of things worth noting here though is, one, the camera software really struggles to find your face in portrait mode when you're wearing a mask. Two, the Galaxy A31 really softens the portrait shot. It's like it blurs the whole frame, then tries to evenly spread the blur in the background and leave a slight amount of blur on the subject to give you an impression of a perfect portrait shot. This is clearly seen with how the edges of Kate's arm on the A21s are sharp and precise compared to that on the A31 that's really soft. This is consistent even on her hair where the Galaxy A21s manages to keep her strands sharp and in focus compared to the A31 where it's slightly blurred. Third, Samsung allows you to play around with the blur in post after the shots are taken. And lastly, the Samsung Galaxy S10 cannot shoot portrait selfies in ultra wide angle mode, even after receiving the latest camera updates. Now on front facing video, these samples are both shot with the ultra wide angle lens and first impressions is they are good. Things look clearer compared to the Galaxy A31, which is pretty interesting because there's a significant price gap between these uh, two phones and the processors are different and I'm really eager to see how this looks in post. How about when I move around? 
impressive even. The 20 and 13 megapixel 1080p video on both phones really brings out the clarity of the object in frame. Video on the A31 seems slightly overexposed, but the phone quickly recovers and balances the exposure as you keep recording. On here, the phones have same color temperature and manage to stay consistent even when you move around. However, a difference I noticed between both phones was in how the video looks in the viewfinder as you shoot the video. The footage in the viewfinder of the A21s looks clearer, more stable, more composed, natural and balanced compared to that on the A31 that is heavily sharpened. It's as if the A31 is trying to convince you on how it puts out sharp quality video only to iron out and balance everything in post. It's nothing too forthcoming about the phone, but it's something worth noting. Sound quality on both video samples from both phones is good, and I'm impressed with how they managed to cancel or minimize the background noise. Before we move on to the rear cameras, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to hit 2000 subs, and your support will really make my day. While at it, also hit that like button, it helps the channel a lot. Moving on to the rear main cameras on both phones, the wide 48 megapixel shooter on the Galaxy A31 and Galaxy A21s bring out some pretty impressive shots. Straight off the bat, they are consistent in color accuracy, detail and sharpness with nothing blown out of the shot. They are so similar that when you put some shots side by side, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. HDR coupled with wide angle images are punchier as seen from the blue in the sky, the green in the hedge, individual poles in the fence and the yellow beams supporting the building. In this mode, we see a switch in color temperature where the A31 now puts out warmer tones compared to the cooler tones of the Galaxy A21s. This stayed consistent in the shots I took, but didn't affect the overall quality or feel of the images. Throw in images shot on the Galaxy S10 and things get tighter. In fact, the A21s and the S10 put out similar color temperature, which is very interesting. <laughs> Moving on to the ultra shots, both phones sport a 8 megapixel ultra angle shooter and I must say here is where I experienced zero differences and rightfully so. Firstly, both phones fit a turn into the frame. Color temperature in the images here is also the same and both phones manage to keep things consistent all through the other shots. In that similarity, they also share a flaw on how the edges of the shot closer to the frame are fringed giving them this sort of unwanted unintended blur. As if the shot was taken on a windy day with trees swaying when they weren't. This is further clarified when you stack the A31 and A21s photos side by side with those of the Galaxy S10. The S10 doesn't experience this sort of edge fringing. This edge fringing issue was also experienced in the Samsung Galaxy A51 when I was comparing it to the S10 where it also stayed consistent and it's something Samsung should address in a future software update. I linked that Samsung Galaxy A51 versus Galaxy S10 camera comparison video right under that like button if you haven't checked it out. Now, in this test, I decided to take things further to really push the phones in their camera limits, see what they can really do. I decided to do this by pushing them all the way to 2x and 3x and all I can say is they performed brilliantly. All 2x images are sharp and just pleasing to look at. Mind blowing at how colors are consistent, clarity is top notch, exposure and saturation are well balanced. Going into this test, I was sure the S10 was going to perform well since it has a dedicated 2x telephoto lens, but how the A21s and A31 put out similar images without a dedicated telephoto lens is just stellar. Also note that the color temperature at this point will vary across all phones, but no loss in detail. Also, to answer down the man's question, past 3x, things start to get finicky and quality degradation is imminent. I have no complaints in the portrait modes on both phones. The blur is mapped out very clearly and nothing intrudes onto the object in focus and results stay consistent. Macro shots on both phones are good, impressive, detailed. But its presence doesn't really make sense because the S10 lacks a macro lens but hold the phone close to the object you want to take a shot of and it does a stellar job. In terms of video, both phones can shoot up to 1080p at 30 frames per second and use electronic image stabilization to give you that smooth video output even though the videos were taken on phones or handheld. Here's a sample of video. The Galaxy A31 and um... The colors look better, more saturated, 
deeper on the Galaxy A21s, which is very shocking. How about the stabilization when I turn around? And I'm really eager to see how this looks like in post and uh, talk to me about that audio quality. The Galaxy A31 and Galaxy A21s don't allow you to switch between lenses as you record, like the Galaxy S10. So here you'll just have to do with zooming into the object in frame to get close. Right, so let's wrap this up. You're paying roughly $210 for the Galaxy A21s and just under $230 for the Galaxy A31. Are you getting your money's worth? Well, yes you are. For the price, these two offerings from Samsung are proving to be quite competitive and ready to perform in that mid-range section. From performance to design to storage options to that camera section, the cameras as you've seen in this video are good and get a thumbs up from me. That said, things get thick in my line of duty where I have to justify a cheaper priced phone performing similarly or even better than a higher priced phone. And this here is the case. In my opinion, the Exynos chip on the A21s, the MediaTek chip on the A31, and the Snapdragon chip on the S10 do have a huge part to play in the photo aspects you've seen in this video. What is for sure is how the A31 and A21s are so close to the S10 and at some point even perform better than the Galaxy S10. This might be a case of new hardware beating the old, but it's quite something interesting. It's really comforting for a buyer to know that they don't need to spend discounted flagship money on last year's premium device, but can spend mid-range money on the latest mid-range 2020 device and get a just as good camera or even better camera. Yes, the S10 has a ton of camera features not present on the A31 and A21s, but that wasn't the point here. The S10 was just a control to give perspective and I think mission accomplished. I'll say it again, mid-range phones are improving day by day and catching up to flagship phone photos. Well, that's it for today. My name is Hezion. This is Lord Hezion. Thanks a bunch for watching. Like and share this video. It will really make my day. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Let's get to 2000 subscribers and let me see you in the next one.